you, everybody else got a chance to, to think about theirs for a second, so I didn't want to cheat you guys out of that. Plus, there were a couple here, people who are here, here today that weren't here last week. So I actually did three quotes so we can have somebody from last week go again. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to, Mom, you get to go first, so I'll actually let you, you're not going to be able to see them, but I'll let you choose one. And you have till the end of offering. Well, I'll be doing offering. Oh, <laughs> well, I can grab that until after the next song, but you need to come up here and read it so everybody knows what your quote is going to be. Even if the whole world is telling you to move, it's your duty to look them in the eye and say, no, you move. Steve Rogers, Captain America. Captain America made this list a few times. <laughs> I picked out Pastor Bob's personally. <laughs> so... He'll get his afterwards. Uh, <laughs> and then we do have a third one, so we'll kind of we'll, we'll see. I guess we'll leave it up to Pastor Bob. He could maybe hand out the other one if he wants to, the one that's not his. So, <laughs> all right, you ready to do offering then? Yeah. All right. I, I can't decide if I want to give you the quote first or try to explain it first. Explain the quote. All right, go ahead and read your quote. <laughs> I am Groot. <laughs> I am Groot from Guardians oh, wow. of the Galaxy. <laughs> the little fuzzy. He's a tree. Yeah, but he's. Oh, it is. Just to give the rest of you who probably have no idea who Groot is, which is probably a good chunk of you, Groot is a basically a living, walking tree. He's an alien, and he can only say three words for his entire language is, I am Groot. So it doesn't matter what he's saying, when he says it, it says, I am Groot. You guys got some powerful. Hallelujah. Even if the whole world is telling you to move, it's your dirty duty to look them in the eye and say, no, you move. What I just shared about the devil, about the destructions that he's bringing, you know, we can, even if the whole world is telling us that we have to bow down to, pro, to poverty, we have to bow down. It's a natural thing to get sick. It's a natural thing to have problems. It's a natural thing. No, we don't live in the natural, do we? We live in the supernatural. We tell something to move, and it has to move. We tell mountains to move, and they have to be cast into the sea, don't they? We say what our life is going to be like because of what we speak. We speak the word of God that has power, Right? It has power to change every single circumstance. doesn't matter if the whole world is telling you to move. I don't care who tells you. Sometimes it's, your, it's uh, people closest to you that are telling you, you guys are uh, just getting off the wall here. You've got to, you guys are not, you know, you're not right. That's not natural to think like that or to believe like that. You've got to tell them, you move. I'm not moving. I'm not moving off of what the Word of God says. I'm not moving off of my confession. I'm not moving off of what I believe. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I will never move from what the Word of God says. His Word has power and authority and will change our lives. It will give us the things that God intends us to have. All the promises are in the Word that are yes and amen are for us when we refuse to move. We give, we give way to the enemy when we do move, when we say, well, maybe I shouldn't have, have stood so strong on that or something. No. You keep sounding strong. You keep standing strong. You keep being that warrior until you see the victory. Because the victory is ours. The victory will never run from us. It will never elude us because we are more than conquerors, aren't we? When we don't move by the circumstances, we're more than conquerors. We don't just conquer. We take the spoils of the enemy. We don't just conquer. We kick him where it hurts. And I won't say anything. <laughs> We, because we refuse to move, right? Because we refuse to stop what God has started in us. We are strong every time we get together in this place. Do you realize that the gathering of these saints together, we're getting stronger to keep our stand on, to keep our stand on. We're not moving. We're standing. And every time we get together like this, we get stronger in our stance against the wiles of the enemy. And we get more knowledgeable, don't we? 
We get more, it says we're supposed to understand the wiles of the devil, doesn't it? It tells us to understand what the tricks that he might try to bring to us. And this is a trick. This is a trick that he tries to bring to us. Having people, even people we love and know, telling us to move, that, it, that, it's, you know, that it's not working, that it's not, it's not our promise, or you're living in a fantasy world. I'm living in the real world. The world that God created and his power and his authority is going to bring us through to whatever he desires for each one of us, our lives. And each one of us has a special calling and a gift upon our life. And he wants us to excel. He wants us, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. That's not just to me. That's to every single one of you. He wants that. That's God's personal desire for you, to be healthy, to walk in divine health, to have prosperity, to be where God wants you to be, to be able to look. Not, and just understand one thing, though. Even if the world is telling you to move, it's your duty to look them in the eye and say, no, you move. You're not talking to people. Your battle is not against flesh and blood. Your battle is not against people that are opposing you. Your battle is against the enemy. And you can tell him, go take a hike. No, you move. Oh, that, that, about, well, you know that sermon? I bet a lot of you remember that sermon by Pastor Tim Farrell at Grace Fellowship in Lexington. That's what you can, I'm not going to repeat it right now, but that's what you can say to the devil. Heck no, you move. You move. I'm not moving. I know what my promises are. I know who I am in Christ. I know what God has intended for me. I know the plans he has for me to prosper and bring me to a good end. Is, is suffering a good end? No. Is any of that stuff? No. I know who I am, and I know what God has planned for me. I know what he wants to do in our lives, and he wants to do the same thing in each and every one of your lives. He wants, you to, bring you, he wants to bring you to that point where you can say, I am a Christian. I walk in prosperity. I walk in divine health. I have the best relationships, everything where God intends it to be. That's what, that's what our goal and our purpose is, is to be able to share the gospel with other people and to be a shining example to other people of the love of God, isn't it? Hallelujah. Like Aaron and Groot. I'm a man of few words. I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw that, um, because he is a tree, the first thing that came to my mind is uh, out of Psalm 1, verse 3, it says, He shall be like a tree planted by uh, rivers of, of water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whether he shall, whatever, whatever, whatever he does shall prosper. And it's talking about the man that's blessed. You and I, we're blessed. Our capability is to be planted like a tree by living water. I know in the book of Revelation it talks about the trees on either side of that living water. And it's important for us to take a hold of the fact that what when we walk according to the plan of God in our lives, everything we do shall prosper. It may not prosper immediately. immediately. It may prosper. It may not prosper. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa, time out. You needed a quote to be given out. Have Zeke bring it up to me. <laughs> All right. Pastor Rick. Come here. Uh, yeah. I, I, I always pick on her, so I'm not going to do it today. You remember this, because it won't happen again. Besides that, we don't take all four of you out of that row. Give, break it up a little bit. You're the only one. Okay, Pastor Rick, you want to read that quote, and then you have, till I get done, prepare it. Read it out to everybody. Life like to doesn't give us process. We give life purpose. Ooh, the flesh. Give, life doesn't give us purpose. We give life purpose. Who says it? The flesh. Okay. Not the flesh, the flesh. <laughs> the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm dyslexic and I get things mixed up. Go sit down. You got time. 
<laughs> it's been a while since I picked on him too. Um, he he used to get picked on all the time. So the Flash, the Flash. <laughs> Um, as I say, and we we are a blessed the blessed people of God. We us are people that are planted by living water, and that we shall prosper when we put root in. And I, I looked at that uh, that name, I am Groot, which really they did, they added a G to the word root. Well, in Psalm eighty, it says this. Find it, Psalm eighty. Oh, I have it over here. That's right, because I wanted to read out the New Living. Psalm 80, verses 8 and 9 says this, You brought us, uh, uh, brought us from Egypt like a grapevine. You drove away the pagan nations and transplanted us into your land. You cleared the ground for us, and we took root and filled the land. That's what we're supposed to do. Actually, that's the whole purpose. I mean, I probably could go right into my sermon off this quote. I won't, but my, the whole purpose of the ambassadorships is for us to take root in the communities. That's what the year of, of, uh, that we're in right now of awareness is all about, is uh, becoming aware of who we are. First off, we're the blessed people, and we, we are planted by a, a, a river of living water and th so that we might grow and we might be nurtured. And then as we take root in that, all of a sudden now we're prospering out. You know, um, Aaron hates trees. That's what, that's what Debbie really likes about Aaron, is he hates trees. And I remember watching Aaron get up in that tree, especially the pine tree, and he climbed up to the top, and he's hanging on with one arm, and he's got his feet on stubs that he's already cut off branches, and he's swinging that, that chainsaw around, and he's cutting that tree down, down, down. You know what? That mentality of taking down something that you don't want in your life, and that's what that pine tree was all about. It was ugly. It was tall, and he just went in and chopped it a bit at a time. He didn't come in and take it all out at once. And sometimes you can't come in and take things out of your life all at once. Now, you can some. We know some people in here that that happened to. But sometimes you just got to pick away at it, peck away at it, peck away at it. But when you're operating that blessed system of God, you have the ability to stay uh, very focused on what you're doing so that you can take root. So now all of a sudden, in that place where that tree was, we've got all kinds of pretty plants and all kinds of stuff that can grow over there now. Why? Because we re-rooted something. As it says here, he says, he took us out of Zion, he took us out of Egypt, uh, like a grapevine. You drove away the pagan nations and transplanted us into your land. You cleared the ground for us. He's already made the ground clear for us. He's already taken us to the point where where we, we can go out and do what we need to do. The ground is ready. Jesus said to his disciples, he says that the, the, the harvest is there, but the laborers are few. He's waiting for us as Christians to get a hold of this thing. He's waiting for the body of Christ to step up and say, you know what, I'm, I'm tired. Where, where, how do I want to finish? How do I want, do I want to finish strong or I just want to sit back? Okay, I've got all these blessings. I'm not going to hell. I'm not, I'm, I'm, now I'm into my stuff. But it's like, the thing is, is that when, when we realize that we are called to do something, we can take inspiration from people right here. We can take inspiration from Robin Gale that said, we're called to do this base program. Through all the adversity, through all the changes, it's still functioning today. Why? Because it was planted in a field that God had already cleared. And they watered the roots, and they kept growing, and they kept growing, and they kept growing. Today, you and I, other than Rob, because he's Iron Man, <laughs> you and I need to be Groot. We need to be growing roots in the system that God's placed before us. And and only saying what God says. I am Groot. You you can say when someone comes to, into contact with you, you need to say. I'm a believer. That's, you don't have to get in a debate with them. And people want to debate you. You say, I'm a believer, and here's what I believe. This word of God is truth and will be as never-ending. It's eternal. And what you're believing in out there, whether it be alcohol or drugs or 
adultery or all this, or even if it's just out there enjoying your Sunday afternoon on the, well, not the river today, but uh, riding a motorcycle or out on a boat on a lake or fishing, those are all good. Going to Disney, those are all fun things. Those are all good. That's, that doesn't mean we have to set those all aside. But the thing is, is that's not our purpose. Sometimes we need to rewind it a little bit, step back, and take, take note of where am I? That was my whole contemplation the whole time we were gone. Matter of fact, this sermon that I'm going to preach today, the beginning of the series, was it working me before then? And I lost the initial paper that I wrote down some thoughts on before I left. But he just he gave me some scripture, and it's, an, it's, it's a purpose message for you and I so that we might grow because you can say, I am a believer. I am a Christian. is the character the flash not the flesh okay <laughs> and I made a negative statement when I started to read that about my uh, had dyslexic every once in a while it comes up to me and that's a problem I had through school and I hated school because of it but it tries to raise up every once in a while the words get mixed up but I had I was dyslexic and I got to constantly tell myself that because when it flares up like that, the old man tries to creep in and tries to get me defeated. <clears throat> but I've been healed of that. That's right. That's right. Life doesn't give us purpose. We give life purpose. And I was thinking about the character when the flash, what happened to him was an accident and how he became the, the, the flash. And he was kind of a geeky guy, just a wimpy person, um, you know, really frail and didn't have any much strength or anything. But when that accident happened to him, he went through a time and uh, the scripture came to me that said, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what he did, his life totally changed. He became the superhero. He went through that process of like we do, reading the word, changing our life. When we accept Christ, the change starts taking place. But we have to dig into the word constantly. And when he did his, let's say, when he went out and he did some hero thing, he was totally exhausted, totally wiped out. His flesh was just totally emptied from energy. And he had to feed himself up. That's where we get our strength is from the word. It feeds us, strengthens us. And we're able to defeat the enemy every time when we recharge. And I heard a scripture. Or I was looking at Facebook this morning. And I forgot the pastor's name. But I loved what he said. I thought, man, that is a quote I'm going to stick with. He says, the enemy's constantly running up to you, bringing your past. Bringing just, this is your past. You're not this. You're not that. And he says, what we do is we listen to what he says. And he tries to tell us our future. And he says, no, I'm going to tell you your future. And he tells about the end of him. And that's what we need to quote out to him. We have victory over life, walking in total healing. You had that victory. He said, wait a minute, I ain't listening to you. This is what God's word says. And this is what you got. I, you have no victory over me. I don't care. There is no victory over me, life or death. I have victory because you know what? You're going to be locked up and fiery hell but I'm going to have eternal blessed life that's what we have walking in health financial health everything we have that victory and I love the flash I watched that series for a long time but uh, that's that's what I got was we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us all things 